Okay, let's begin. So uh, I'm gonna paste the question uh, in the uh, edit. Okay. Okay. So uh, very 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 similar. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this time, actually, you are taking a string, not only a string and a, and also integer k. Uh, it means uh, before when we say duplicate, we mean it's more like a two, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, like a two. Uh, adjacent uh, duplicated letters and you remove it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the example two, uh, this time it's three, right? Okay. So basically, if it's triple E and then uh, you remove E, right? Then you got uh, triple C. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, after you remove triple C, you got, uh, I think, uh, triple B, then triple D, right? So yeah, the the uh, the pattern is the same, ex except that uh, this time you actually have an integer k. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, right. So very similar to my la uh for the last question. So mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna start off with uh the similar approach. So and see what I can improvise from there. Mm-hmm. So uh, last time I did a string builder for uh, to keep track of my uh, the mm -hmm. string as I'm removing them. So mm -hmm. I'm going to use a second one as an example. Mm -hmm. So for my last approach, I would put in D to my string builder and then E. And then as soon as I see the second E, I'm going to return. Uh, I'm going to remove both of them. Uh, but this time, I think the difference I need to make is uh, as long as it's less than my counter. So uh, put in D counters is one. Uh, and C, E is different from D, so there's nothing to count. So it's still similar to a stack. Are you saying right. like you trying to go from the, the top of the stack and go back? up to K to C every time, uh, kind of like a, if I understand you correctly, right? So basically yeah. you're saying every time I go back to like a up to K, mm -hmm. uh, if K let's say it's a big numbers and every time uh, you have to go back like a... Yeah, so I go long, back right? uh, at most K, right? So, okay. So yeah, but is that, is that a, Worst case could happen to every mm -hmm. letter when you're trying to add, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can okay. see that working, but the mm -hmm. time complexity might be a little bit higher than I expected. Okay, I see. So how, how about this? I mean, uh, if we were still talking about a stack, right? Yeah. But when instead of like, uh, before you are just pu pushing purely letter, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a, like a, so I'm typing a little bit. Let's say this is a stack, right? Yeah. If you are pushing down a pair, so let's say, say here E, when you say the first E, I mean, let's mm -hmm. say this. I see. So, uh, so instead of, uh, can you still hear me? Hello? Uh, I don't think I can hear you. Uh... Hello? Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. I'm so sorry. I think it's my internet. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, you were saying. Uh, I think I... Uh, we were talking about the pair. Yeah, I mean, if you uh, let me uh, walk through it again. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me refresh my page. Maybe I lost. I think you lost connection. Can you refresh the page? Oh, I think we lost. Okay. Yeah, I can see you. Okay. Okay. I refresh my page. Okay. So what I'm saying is, so when you uh, if we have a pair for the mm -hmm. stack before it's purely letter, right? If we also check the uh the count, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Let's say put it here. So when you see the second E, we actually update it to be two, right? Right. And you see the third one, you update it to I be three. Update my page. Right. Then you actually, when the three equal to K, you can actually I take can... the whole entry out, right? Right. Yeah. And the uh, compared to your previous approach, a uh, previous approach, you have to go all the way to K, right? But the mm -hmm. DAO, I mean, it's always uh, like constant time, right? Okay. Because you just flip the number, right? Mm -hmm. It's using, uh, actually, the memory wise, I think uh, it's even better because uh, even let's say K is very big, like 100. Then so you're you're only, you only using one entry, right? It's just on right. number, right? Instead of pushing down, uh, actually, uh, instead of going back like a k times, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that could work. So yeah. let me uh, implement that. Uh, mm. So just just to briefly. Uh, let me give you this uh the method the signature. Uh, also, I think uh, for the structure, you're gonna push down into the uh into the I stack, think... right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think uh, you might. Okay, let me put it here. So let's uh, make it as a code. So, okay, you see here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, uh, what I'm saying is, you might want to define a class, right? I yeah. mean, to mm -hmm. to. Uh, Okay, to to make it uh, like uh, uh the entry, right? Yeah, so you can define class. another class, mm -hmm. or entry or something. Yeah. Then you can. Okay. Okay. Uh yeah. Thank you for the hint. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, like you said, uh, using a pair would be would save a lot a lot more time. So, uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna define a custom class to store this information. Mm -hmm. So uh, in here, oh, okay, I can't tap. So uh, mm -hmm. first I want to save a character. So the current character uh, that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. And then I also want to want a uh, counter. So, okay, uh, counter. Mm -hmm. And then a very simple constructor. Oh. Okay, I can. Oh, you can skip the constructor. I okay, understand. Okay. Assume you have one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just gonna. Um, yep. Just gonna. Yeah, yeah. So that's the constructor I'm gonna be using, and. So first, uh, I can again. I'm gonna use a stack. Uh, stack of my <coughs> recall last time uh mm -hmm. stack might not be because in the end you're gonna you know like uh, uh -huh. in the end you're gonna go from yeah i mean when you construct it mm -hmm. so uh, with can... this approach in the end you still need to yeah. uh, construct a string right mm -hmm. and there is this time a little bit different if you have to use counter when you construct a string right instead of uh okay. if you counter is two right you need to like basically append twice right basically yeah. So I think it will be wise to use a linked list, linked right? List. Like last time, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, with the linked list, I can still um yeah, the, the push API to is the still, back. Yeah. Okay. Except, uh, I mean, when you push it down to the linked list instead of stack, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, instead of the character, you are basically mm -hmm. uh, doing an entry. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm still gonna call it my stack uh and then now i'm going to uh go through the string to construct my entries mm -hmm. okay. okay. So uh first so similar as last time uh if my uh, st uh stack is empty so oh uh, if it's uh yeah if it's empty uh, 
is I think it's also called is empty or yeah, uh, yeah it's the same okay, is empty so uh if it is empty or uh let's see yeah if, if it is empty or the character I'm currently looking at is not the same as my uh last uh the top of the stack character that means I have to push a new um pair into my uh my stack so current character uh for oh uh so this string okay yeah but you're looking at the eyes character okay yes my uh, the yeah. current character i'm looking at and i can use uh i think it's called get last mm -hmm. so that will give me the last entry and i want the character so if it's not equal then i need to put in a new entry what is this dot ch here oh that's my so that get last oh okay yeah entry. because this now is an entry okay yeah okay. so uh in that case dot add new entry using the constructor i define for my current character we might make this a local variable uh, typing in twice ah i see yeah uh, actually more than twice later on as well yeah uh, so yeah it's a good idea um start char at right oops uh start char oh right here okay and i also need a counter so i start with uh one because i've seen it once mm -hmm. yeah okay and the other case is if it is already on my stack, then uh, I already check if it's not. Uh, I already check if uh, if it's empty. So here it will definitely not be empty. Then I can just uh, update the last uh, update the last uh, element on the stack. So not get last. Uh, that'll give me the entry dot counter. Uh, so I think that'll help me mm -hmm. update. Uh, yeah, it will increment it. Increment my counter. Okay. And if it equals K, so so if it equals K, then I don't want that list. Uh, I don't want this character anymore. Mm -hmm. okay. So if I get last uh, counter equals k then just remove this yes. okay so for example here uh i put in three e's uh keep uh keep updating the counter from one two until uh this third one that'll be three which equals to k then it's just going to remove this pair entirely and then once that's removed i move my counter to the next character which is uh another d and it's going to go back to update this counter for me and, and then after that is b so move uh it's going to create a new counter uh entry object and so on does your code works with the example like uh let's say d e e d d does it work with this case? Uh, yes, I believe so because, uh, because in this case, uh, I increment D, and then I move on to increment E, which uh at here will equal to three, so it'll remove that entry entirely, and then my uh I keeps incrementing to the next character, which is the second D, and my uh, top of the stack will be this first entry I push. So it's going to increment that. And then the third D is going to equal to K. So in the end, my uh, linked list will have no entry object, which means it, the entire stack gets, uh, the entire string gets removed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now after this for loop, I should have a clean 
uh, a clean a clean string I can uh, convert to. So mm -hmm. again, I'm going to be using a string builder. And then I'm going to go through my stack to mm -hmm. uh, repeatedly uh, get the first uh, get the first element and then ink append how many times depend. So. Yeah. So I less than okay. And first I'm gonna get the entry. Uh in this case I I think a for each loop would be more suitable because I don't need the the count uh the index yeah. of, of each entry. So as he for each entry and then and then I can just append uh for uh, for each character I am I cannot remember at the top of the head whether string builder has like a built-in API for uh, it's append. append yeah yeah uh for a set amount of times like consecutive uh instead that you have to do it outside of the string builder I mean okay yeah then you I'll probably just want to file. leverage the entry which has a counter right Right, yeah. So I'll just do it with so the counter is two. You you kind of like append twice, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So while it's greater than zero, I'll just append and then in decrement the counter. Yeah, yeah. Because earlier I was wondering if there's like a built-in API for a string. Build, no, no. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so I think uh, yeah. Nope. Okay. Yeah, so I think that'll, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it'll append from the beginning and append how many times it uh, I need, depending on the counter, decrement the counter. As it gets out of this loop, it has a it will have finished this entry and move on to the next one to continue building my string. So in the end, I can just return the completed string. <clears throat> All right, so let me see. Uh, maybe you can you might be able to move this into here. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, because I'm all oh, right. So I'm using this value and then decrementing it. Yeah, <clears throat> if it's one, right? Mm -hmm. So first it's one, it's bigger than zero. You do it once mm -hmm. and it becomes zero. Yeah, shoot. Okay, yeah. So... <clears throat> I think this <clears throat> works. Um, yeah, do you want to walk through an example? Uh, yes. So I'm going to use <clears throat> this example. Uh, actually, I, I think I use, uh, I'll just use this one, the, the example three, which I have. Uh, this is a bit, a bit too long. Just too use long. example two, I think. OK, yeah. yeah, sure. And we want to see actually K is three, right? Two is more like the previous The question. second one, right. OK, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, moving to here so I can see better. Um, So yeah, I start with an empty stack. <clears throat> and then here, I will check, uh, get the char current character, which is D, and check if it's empty, which it is then I know that I definitely need to append a new entry set, which is these one uh, counter of existing at once. And, and then moving on to the next character, which is here. So move on to the next character. And the stack is not empty, and it, but it is different from the last, uh, the top of the stack character I've seen. So create a new entry for that. Now I have E1, seen it once. And then I move on to the index equals one, two. And here we're at the second case because CH, which is E, does equal to the uh, character at the top of my stack, which is E. So I'll increment that. And then I do that for, uh, do the same thing for the third E I've encountered. So, which is here. And now it equals a K. So I can remove my entry set. Mm -hmm. So now I'm back with yeah, D. Looks good. I think it works. 
Uh, okay. So we can go to the feedback. Uh, uh, I mean, basically the part. So first, uh, how do you feel? Um. Uh, uh. Uh. Yeah. The tip. Uh. The the hint was, uh, helpful. I. Yes, that's my only concern. I think mm -hmm. your reflection is pretty good once you have the thought, right? Uh, my only concern is uh, so basically you uh, I think the two hints actually right. Mm -hmm. Um, one is you want to try to go down a not uh, so optimal path, mm -hmm. but we, we actually which will actually time out in lead code uh, mm -hmm. actually actually. Mm -hmm. Um, if if I'm not so nice interviewer, I may ask uh, just let you go implement it and maybe later follow up with a. Uh, uh, follow up, ask you to improve it. Mm -hmm. and at that point, I don't know if you are able to come up with uh, this solution. Do you think you will be able to come up with a solution without a hint? Uh, I think it will definitely took me some time. Yeah, some time. I mean, that's, that's a fake word. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, you, I don't you think I would be Yeah, fast actually, enough. Like, uh, if you are able to get this in 30 minutes or not, mm -hmm. right? Uh, have you seen this question before? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, the other thing is actually the sec the the second thing is actually not very good because mm -hmm. uh, last time we already the linguist previous question we already used the stack right yeah um not sure why you still want to use stack I mean um because I mean, as a rule of thumb, I mean, linked list is always better than stack because whatever stack can do, linked list mm -hmm. can do, right? Yeah. And the link, linked list, uh, you can go from the backwards if you want, right? Mm -hmm. You can use the, because with the linked list, you can use the, iter, uh, you can do it to use iterator like this, or you can mm -hmm. use I, uh, like a index. Then you can go, I mean, you can try first reversely if you want, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, what I'm saying is, unless you are sure this is stack, you always prefer linked list okay. because linked list have way more, right? <laughs> way mm -hmm. more stuff than, uh, stack than whatever the, uh, stack has, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, that's the two point. Uh, my I, my still concern is you if the interviewer is. Uh, uh not very nice mm -hmm. you may be stuck right yeah. uh, especially the first uh, part i mean like uh, uh you might basically going down past using the uh straightforward uh, like a stack you like basically without the counter mm -hmm. then you keep going but uh, in the end actually i think uh, for this problem at least for this problem the interviewer is uh at least looking at a better solution right mm -hmm. uh, because the, it's a little bit uh, not very efficient if you every time you have to go down K, mm -hmm. uh, down the stack, right? Yeah. Mm. But uh, your refresh is good. Uh, so I see that you once you get a hint, you are able to immediately like uh, the good thing is uh, I mean you, you once you have a hint, uh, you uh a little bit of hint, just a little bit of hint, mm -hmm. you can immediately like uh oh understand, first understand it and then quickly uh able to translate it into code and the side part so basically if we we are talking about the interview question is actually two parts right the first mm -hmm. part is the the part you can get the idea right the mm -hmm. second part is converted the idea into the code right mm -hmm. so for the second part i think you're pretty good except sometimes like the uh, I mean, you might have the concern basically is like a, a little bit rusty on the mm -hmm. syntax, but the, which you could just ask interviewer or just use pseudocode, like say, mm -hmm. oh, I, I don't remember what the method name is, but mm -hmm. I'll just use pseudocode. I just call it, it it's fine. Okay. Sometimes the interviewer might correct you. For the first part, yeah, it, it's uh, relatively tough. I mean, different company have different uh, emphasis on this, like uh, mm -hmm. I think for Google Google interviews, they, they actually are very fo uh, focused on the first part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are relatively easier on the second part. 
uh, what I'm saying is, the interview country usually very tough to mm. come up with the idea, right? Yeah. And like a company like Facebook is usually sometimes it's easier easier to think of the idea, but uh, translate the coded part is second part might be difficult. Yeah. Okay. I think for other company like Bloomberg, uh, so they actually want let you uh ask you to compile and run, mm. but uh, because you have a code pad, so uh you will be able to uh basically have uh auto complete. So basically it has hint. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing is uh, uh another thing is if you have issue because you are able to run it right instead of here we are mentally working through the test case they might just ask you to run it to see mm -hmm. if it's correct or not yeah. but, uh, so this in this case it's also another skill set like uh, which which we cannot do it today is uh, you should be able to debug it if you have an issue right uh, because you don't have an IntelliJ, you cannot have a breakpoint on it. So the the, mm -hmm. the thing you can do is do system dot out print to uh -huh. print it. And, but I think you should be able to accomplish that, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think that's what my feedback is. Okay, you can stop recording now. Yeah. <laughs>